Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at how to find the volume of a frustrum. Now, whenever I teach this to a class, the volume of a frustrum, the first question they say is, what is a frustrum? So if we have got a cone or a pyramid, and the top of it is chopped off, a very technical language I know, but if the top of it is chopped off like so, the shape that is left is called a frustrum. So if that could be a pyramid or a cone. So this shape here is a frustrum. And the main thing is whenever it's cut, so this slice has got to be parallel, this plane here is parallel to the base. So it can't just be cut at any angle. It's cut horizontally here across and the top's removed and this is called a frustrum. And it could be a pyramid or it could be a cone. So let's have a look at a question now. So here we have got a question and it says, shown as a frustrum of a cone. So as you can see, the top of it's been chopped off. Uh, that had a perpendicular height of 20 centimeters. So what's left is 10 centimeters. So we had another 10 centimeters above it to get to the top of the cone and the top of it's been chopped off. And the question says, find the volume of the frustrum. So to find the volume of a frustrum, what I tend to do is I tend to work out the volume of the cone that was there in the first place, the whole big cone. I then work at the volume of what's been chopped off and then I then just take those away to see what's the volume of what's been left the frustrum so I'm just going to move it down a bit here so just moving this down so we've got a bit more room just to sort of sketch so we had a cone to begin with and the cone excuse the very um freehand drawn here so here we've got the cone <laughs> um, and the cone to begin with had a height of 20 centimeters so that was another 10 centimeters tall so the whole thing is 20 centimeters and the question says find the volume of the frustrum so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the volume of the whole the whole cone to begin with so the volume of a cone volume is equal to one third pi r squared h so that's one third times pi times the radius of the base, so off the whole cone, the radius of the base was eight, so times by eight squared, and times by the height, that's the height of the whole cone, which is equal to 20, so we times that by 20. And let's see what that gives us. So type nine to the calculator gives us 1,340.412866. I tend not to round, I tend to write the whole calculator display down, and I round at the end. And that's centimeters cubed. So that's the volume of the whole cone. Now we're going to work out the volume of the cone that's been removed. So this cone at the top. So that's going to be the volume is equal to one third times pi times by the radius four squared times by the height. And of this cone, it was equal to 10. And then when we do that, we get that is equal to 167.55. 16082 and when we take those away we'll find the volume of the frost from what's left so 1340.41 blah 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 subtract 167.551 blah 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 and that equals when we do that 1340.412866 subtract my previous answer and I get that's equal to 1172.86 and I'll just do it to two decimal places in centimeters cubed. So the volume of the frustrum is 1172.86 centimeters cubed. And that's it. So that was quite a nice question where they told us the height of the whole cone to begin with. We knew what was left whenever it was chopped off so we could then work it out. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Now this question is going to be a bit trickier. We have got this time the frustrum of a pyramid. So we have got a pyramid and it has been chopped and this is what's left, this shape here. And it says work out the volume of this frustrum. So here we have got the frustrum here. It's a rectangular based pyramid because we have got 9 and 12 being the dimensions of the rectangular rectangle on the bottom and three and four centimeters being the dimensions of the rectangle on the top and it's got a height of five centimeters. Now this question uh, is a bit harder than the previous one. It's a bit harder because the previous one told us the height of the cone to begin with but this one it doesn't tell us the height of the pyramid to begin with. So there's an important thing which is you know it's quite useful whenever you're looking at frustrums and that is this. If you have got the, the whole pyramid to begin with and a top bit of it's being chopped off, so if I take this top bit off, they are mathematically similar. So remember similar, they mean enlargements of each other. So this one here, this uh, pyramid, if we enlarged it, we'd get back to the one we started with. So the bit that's being chopped off there to remove from the top is mathematically similar to the whole pyramid. So as you look here, if we just sort of label these dimensions here, we can work out the height of the whole pyramid. So we have got for the little rectangle, we had 
three and four. And for the big one, we had, got, we've, we had nine and 12. And as you can see, they've been enlarged by a scale factor of three, because three times three is nine, and four times three is 12. So the whole big pyramid, um, it, it's um, three times larger than the one that was removed. Okay, now we can use that information to work out the height of the pyramid to begin with. Because we know the height of what was remaining, what was left is five. So we know that the height of this bit was five. So we know, uh, because it's been enlarged by scale factor three, so if we call this height x, so the height of this one here would be equal to three x. So we know that the, the if the height of the smaller one was x, the height of the larger one was three x. So we know it was three times larger. Now we know that the difference, what's left, so if we remove this, we know that what's left is five centimeters. So because we've got three X and X, if we take those away, we're left with two X. So we know that if we took away these heights, what's left is five. So we know that two X equals five. So X equals 2.5. So the height of the pyramid that, remo that was removed was 2.5 centimeters. And the height of the larger one, well, that's three X, that's going to be 7.5 centimeters. And that's it. Well, it's not it. That's the, the numbers that we're going to use to answer this question. But that's the sort of the, if the question doesn't mention the height of the original pyramid or cone, you might need to use the fact that they were mathematically similar. So enlargements, the bit that's removed and the whole thing to work out perhaps the missing height. Okay, let's now do the question. So let's go back. Uh, we know the height of the whole thing was 7.5. So we go back here. I'm going to just sketch really badly a pyramid <laughs> and we have got the height of it is uh, the whole thing is 7.5 so okay so the volume of a pyramid the volume is equal to one third the area of the base times by the height so that's going to be for the whole big pyramid that was going to be a third times by the area of the base, so that's going to be equal to nine times 12, times by the height, which is equal to 7.5. And that will give us the uh, volume of the whole big pyramid to begin with. So let's work that out. So one third times by nine, times by 12, times by 7.5. And we get that to be 270 centimeters cubed. Okay, the volume of the, co uh, the pyramid that was removed at the top, so, and uh, that would be volume is equal to a third times the area of the base, where we've got three times four, and then we're times that by the height, where well, the height of the smaller pyramid was 2.5. And then if we multiply those together, we're going to get a third times three times four times 2.5 is equal to 10. So that's equal to 10 centimeters cubed. And then if we wanna work at the volume of the thrust and what's left, we just take away the 10 from the 270. So 270 take away 10 is equal to 260 centimeters cubed. So what is a thrust room? Well, a thrust room is what's left after the top of a pyramid sorry, the top of a pyramid or top of a cone is removed. And to get its volume, what I would often recommend is find the volume of the whole ship to begin with, and then work out the volume of what was removed and take them away. Okay.